There is way too much cabbage in the garden right now. I have 12 heads, some are ready, so it's time to turn it into some kraut with the Garden Hermit. I mean, would you guys just look at this? I mean, this one right here especially. I don't know if that's the one we're gonna harvest, but it's certainly a nice looking cabbage. And look who shows up as soon as I mention that kraut. <laughs> He's here. I was looking to steal one actually. So what we did is kind of take a look and this one looks done, but I don't know about you, Jacques, this to me feels a little loose. Yeah, I think this one, it's a little bit loose. And then this one are probably the closest to being done. Yeah. Th maybe this one's a little harder. Let's try this one here. It's not necessarily about how big they get. No, it's it is more certainly. About how it feels. <laughs> and you know what? I've heard that before. <laughs> I'll say that much. You have a real... I don't even plan this at he all. He really <laughs> just says stuff like that every day, guys. It's really simple. I'm just gonna take the, what are these ones? F2s? Yeah, without the F2s. And come in all the way at the base here. Ooh, man. Look at that. That's, That's pretty cabbage. dang good, man. So what we're gonna do is bring it on over to the harvest sink, pre-process it before we bring it inside and turn it into kraut. So this guy needs to get cut down just to the head, and I can actually see there are a little bit of aphid damage on these big fan leaves, but it's not really a big deal because we did harvest it just now at the right time. So I'm just gonna cut these away. Once the chickens are a little older, you better believe these are going straight into that outdoor run that we'll be building because I need those little fertility generators to be doing their jobs here, paying their rent on the homestead property. But for now, these will just go into the compost section and uh, they'll break down really nicely. And I am gonna rinse it out here in the outdoor sink because I do see little bits of aphid poop and stuff like that that I really don't wanna bring in. So you can see this little bits of, of bug poop here. We do not want that. Although we are going for a pickle recipe. I mean, I don't wanna pickle any bug poop. This is how the sink works right now, by the way, guys. Just goes right into this bucket and I dump that out into the garden. So the final thing I'm gonna do is just trim off this bottom edge here. There you go. Now it's starting to look like a cabbage. I don't know what it is, but something about when I harvest, I really want to make it look like you would have bought it at the restaurant, at the grocery store. It's just very satisfying for me to clean it up to that level. But you can see it is, it is kind of a loose head, especially when you, you go into the center here. It's not as tightly wound as I would have liked. I might attribute that to some of the temperatures we've had here, but hard to really say exactly. Nevertheless, we are going to start processing this into some kraut. The next step is to take a look at this cross section. So I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna sort of shred the cabbage, but we really wanna see what this looks like. I'm so curious on the inside. We'll see how tight the head is. And as I suspected, it is somewhat loose, but I don't think that means that we can't use this. But really you would rather see these be way more closely packed together, really akin to like this type of structure throughout the entire thing. So I'd say this is definitely looser than I would want, but what I'm gonna do is core this out and I'll dice all this up. Okay, I'm gonna to toss the shredded cabbage into a big stainless bowl. I might give it one more rinse just to make sure I got all the bug stuff out of there before we get into the salting section of the process. I've got some Celtic sea salt here, non-iodized, and really, I'm just gonna put in enough to coat and the whole purpose here is to start to get this to release some moisture. And so I need to go into a massaging process for, I don't know, five or six minutes or so. But while I'm doing this, Jacques, why don't you run out to the front and grab some extra little little goodies for, for the crowd. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, so we're gonna go down this little pathway here and find us some carrots. All right, out here in the carrot bed, we're gonna come in, grab a handful. <sighs> and give it a pull. Honestly, it's a good looking bunch. So let's go process this up and throw it in the kraut. So while I was massaging away, you can see how much it really breaks it down. I actually probably could have gone a little more, but it's resting right now while Jacques has water. the carrots. Man, these carrots really did well this year, yeah. I have to say. They look great. I'm pretty dang pleased with them. So and what are you gonna do as far as the dice? If we were to do it ideally, we'd probably shred it. But that I think we're just gonna go with like a rough chop maybe. I think a rough chop. But check this out. I don't know if you could see it, but when you have that kind of marbled look, yeah. I feel like I only noticed that in my winter carrots once they got cold mm. enough and they get a little sweeter. Interesting. But we did have it back. We did, literally had hail. Recently, yeah, so. that's true. I'll say the one thing I really like about a raised bed carrot is how easy it is to clean. The so ones easy. that I grow in the ground and clay are kind of a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So this is great. All right. Chop time. Do that. And we'll do some strips. 
rough chop, you know, yeah. rustic style. Yeah, I cottage, mean, cottage life, as as like the hermit method. does, you know. <laughs> this is how they do it in his his hermitage. Yeah, I wouldn't call cottage. this a, a Julianne, but it's a <laughs> Julianne esque. Yeah, it's a so there's it's, something. It's the Bulgarian version of a Julianne. Let's call it that <laughs> right there. <laughs> By the way, we are using the Kraut Source recipe book, which lo and behold, it is on our store because we're going to be using the Kraut Source to actually pickle this. But first we have to actually talk about what we're doing here. So I'm going to use a tablespoon of caraway seed. I know what it smells like. I know what it tastes like, but I just haven't used it much in cooking. So we'll see how that goes. We're going to put a little bit more salt in. So I'm going to just go to one, especially because I put maybe a little bit too much in initially. And then this is really interesting. Jacques, Jacques has these from Albania. Juniper berries. I didn't know they were from Albania. Yeah, these are from Albania. So it's as popular as a seasoning for venison, squab, pheasant. You can actually make you know, juniper is the thing that makes gin, that makes gin gin. So I'm gonna put in six juniper berries, and then I'm gonna go with another quick massage, and then we're gonna bust out our mason jars and show you the magic. I mean, just look at what it looks like right now. I think in the future, Jacques, this is maybe call this a rustic, <laughs> so rustic style. This is a rustic uh, style. But I think in the future, if you got uniformity on your slicing of carrots and any sort of veggies that you added in, maybe that would be better. I think it might be. I'm not sure. It would make it a more efficient it fermentation. Certainly would. It certainly would. Okay, let's bust out our mason jar. The jars are here. These are standard quart mason jars, right? Yeah, wide mouth. And then here's where the magic comes in. I fell in love with this little tool many years ago, actually, when I first got into doing like quick refrigerator pickles from the garden stuff at the old Epic Garden in the front yard of my old place. So it's called a Kraut Source. We actually just picked some up. You can get them on the store right now. We have a limited selection of them, but it's very, very clever. So let me first show you how this works by filling up the jar. So you're gonna take your Kraut, we're gonna pop it in and really compress it down, but I wanna make sure I get you know enough in there first. And we can even dump some of this liquid in. If you don't have enough liquid, you're gonna have to add some brining solution, which we probably are gonna have to do. But let's just say that's enough right there. We'll tamp it down. You probably should have like a spoon or something, but I'm gonna use a pepper jar. Now here's sort of the magic of the crowd source. This is what I really like about it. You've got this little mechanism here where you lift it up and voila, there's like a magic spring right here. Cause the, the real secret is you want all of your solids to be below the liquid line, which like I said, we will add some brine in here to make that th the case. So again, down with this, now you can really see, come in here, Jacques, you can kind of see how it is forcing all the material below, which is the whole point of that little mechanism right there. On with this, on with your normal mason jar top. There we go. And you're probably wondering, okay, well, what's going on with, with this nonsense here? And this is where I think the real beauty of the design comes into play, because you've got this little spot here to put in some liquid, some water, and then you put this on top and you've created an air seal, so no new air is coming into the system, but air can come out as this ferments and off gases. And so you have this way of automatically burping this jar. The fermentation is gonna happen. We're gonna put this in like a cool, dark place, or just room temperature dark place for about seven to 14 days. So this is the Kraut Source. This is the first batch of Epic Kraut. Like I said, the Kraut Source and the recipe book are on our store now. So if you wanna experiment with stuff like this, I found it as someone who is not extremely experienced with fermenting to be a really good introductory way to get into it. So check it out. Till next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.